Hi, this is lesson 2.6 from Taylor Shaw. Calculus Extended, we want to deal now with increasing, decreasing functions. So we want to use the first derivative to tell us if we're increasing or decreasing. F prime positive, F prime negative, very easy. First derivative test, that will help us find local maxes and mins. So what we'll do is, first of all, we'll check for domain. You should always look at the domain of a function to make sure that you are answering the questions in the properly defined domain of that function. Two, find all critical numbers, f prime equaling zero or f prime is undefined. And then you also have to look at the domain restrictions because critical numbers can't be in a place where the function is not defined. Three, locate critical numbers and domain restrictions on the F prime number line. Label as CN, or I, I might say critical values instead of critical numbers, but it's the same. Four, test the sign of F prime in each interval and label the signs on the number line. So a labeled sign chart. And then five, list increasing, decreasing intervals and or identify relative min and max x values. If requested, find the y values or the points. I'm also going to add in here is that you do have to justify if it is a relative max or min by saying that f prime is positive or f prime is negative or changes from positive to negative or negative to positive depending upon if it's a relative max or relative min. So let's look at number one. We should be okay with domain because this is the cube root. When you have the three down below, it's cube root. And so we don't have domain restrictions on positive, um, sorry, negative numbers, cube roots and negative numbers. So let's take the derivative of this. So I'm going to take the two thirds out in front and I get x squared minus nine raised to the one less power. And then you don't forget to do the chain. So I'm going to multiply by two x, which is the derivative of inside. If I, if I simplify this now, I'm going to take and get negative uh, positive 4x all over the 3 and then the cube root x squared minus 9. And I keep on putting 1 halves here. This should be 1 third. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is my derivative. Now to find the critical numbers, what I want to do is go ahead and set this equal to 0 or find out also where f prime is undefined. The numerator tells me that I'll be 0 at x equal to 0. The denominator tells me where I'll be undefined. If you look here, I'm going to get a 0 in the denominator if x is equal to plus or minus 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a number line. The number line tells me a lot about my function. And I'm going to find the f prime values. If f prime is positive, I'm going to be increasing. f prime negative, I'm going to be decreasing. I'm going to put 0 here, I put 3, and put these in order. And then I figure out in each one of these intervals, so if I start with this leftmost interval, what is the value of f prime in that interval? So I pick a number, any number in that interval, so maybe I'm thinking negative 4. So if I let x equal to negative 4 and I plug it in here, I don't really have to calculate all this, but I do have to figure out if I'm dealing with a positive or a negative. And then I get 16 minus 9. So here on the top, I'm going to get a negative, And on the bottom, I'm going to get a positive. So a negative divided by positive is going to be a negative. So f prime in this interval is going to be negative. If I take a value here, this might be, for instance, negative 1. If I do that same thing, I'm going to get negative in the numerator, and I'm going to get negative in the denominator. So a negative divided by a negative is going to be positive. Plug in 1, I'm going to get a negative. You can do that for yourself. And if I plug in, for instance, 4, I'm going to get positive divided by positive. So I'm going to get a positive. What does this tell us? This tells us that for f, f is going to be decreasing in this interval. It's going to be increasing in this interval. It's going to be decreasing in this interval. And it's going to be increasing in that interval. So that tells us a lot about what's going on. And so we're increasing from negative 3 to 0 because f prime is positive. And so you should write that. That's a justification right there. And then decreasing on negative infinity to negative 3 and 0 to 3 because 
f prime is negative. These would be my justifications. I'm going to ask you to do that, and so you have to tell me why you're saying that. Now for my relative minimums and my relative maximums. If I draw out these lines like this, this pretty much tells me the story. If f prime changes from a negative to a positive, I'm going to have a relative minimum. So right here at negative 3, I'm going to have a relative minimum, and at 3, I'm going to have a relative minimum. So I'm going to write that relative minimums at x equal to plus or minus 3. Why is that? Because f prime changes from negative to positive. You summarize the relative maximums and see if you can replicate what that would be. And so now my relative max is going to be at x equal to 0 right here because f prime changes from positive to negative. And that's what I said here. So that's how you would represent relative mins and relative maxes. Now they might also ask for the points. If they ask for the points, then you would have to, oh, they did ask for the points here. So I'm going to have to list them as points. So the point that's the relative minimum is take the 3 and plug it in back into your original function up here. And then also plug in the 0 into the original function and those will give you the points. And so when it says points, give the points. If it just says the x values, then just give my x values. Okay, number 2. If we do y prime, y prime is going to be 1 minus 2 cosine of x. And notice that I'm on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So I have a restriction already. Set this equal to 0 and solve this. So cosine of x is equal to 1 half. That tells me that x is equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 on my unit circle. So those are my two values. So I'm going to set this up, draw my number line, and separate this out with my, I actually start at 0 here, and then I have my pi over 3, and then I have my 5 pi over 3. Figure out your derivative in each one of these intervals now. So maybe I pick pi over 6 in here. So if I plug in pi over 6, that would be 1 minus the square root of 3, and so that would be a negative. So you don't have to figure out what the number is, but you just have to figure out if it's positive or negative. If I pick a number now in this interval, how about pi over 2? Pi over 2 into here would be 0, so 1, so that, well, it's 1 minus 0, so it's positive. And then I end up picking another number in here, and I'm going to get a negative. And so if I draw out and say that this is f prime, this is f, f is going to be decreasing here, it's going to be increasing here, and it's going to be decreasing there. That tells us a lot. So if I do increasing, it's going to be on the interval from pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3. It's open interval. And then it's going to be decreasing from 0 to pi over 3, and then 5 pi over 3 to 2 pi, because this is, should be 2 pi. Why are each one of these the case? Because f prime is greater than 0 for increasing, and f prime is less than 0 for decreasing. So my relative max, it looks like it's here at 5 pi over 3, and so if I take 5 pi over 3, that's my x coordinate, my y coordinate turns out to be 5 pi over 3, which is the x, and then plus square root of 3, because if I put it in back up here, I'm going to get 5 pi over 3 plus the square root of 3. You can try that for yourself. And then the, and this is because f prime changes from positive to negative. Try the relative min, write that one out. So the relative min is pi over 3. So I have a pi over 3 here because I go from f prime goes from negative to positive, and this is the y value because f prime changes from negative to positive. Try to write f prime. Don't write the derivative. That is 
we don't know which derivative you're talking about, and that's vag. So just put in the f prime or whichever function you're talking about, the derivative of that. Okay, for number three, what we can do is we can do this one two ways. We can use the quotient rule or we can use the rabbit method and separate each one of these pieces out and simplify it as I did there. I'm going to use the quotient rule, but you could definitely just use each, this, each one of these term by term. Domain, do we have a domain issue? This one we do. The domain, we have problems with x equaling 0. And then if I do f prime, we do the quotient rule. Low d high less high d low. Draw the line, denominator squared will go. And then if I simplify this, I'm going to get 9x to the fourth minus 9 all over 9x squared. And I can factor this 9x to the fourth minus 1. And x to the fourth minus 1 does give me x squared plus 1, x squared minus 1, which is x minus 1, x plus 1. And then this is all over 9x squared. Oh, I'm sorry, I can cancel that 9. So if I find out when the, I get my zeros, my critical numbers will be at x equal to 1, x equal to negative 1, and at 0 where I'm undefined. Set up your number line. I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 0. And if I plug in negative 2, you can do this for yourself. I'm going to get a positive, then I'm going to get a negative. I'm going to get a negative, and I'm going to get a positive. So my f is going to be increasing first, decreasing next, decreasing again, increasing at the end. Go ahead and summarize this one yourself, and then I'll print my answer, and you can check it with yours. Pause, please. And there you have the summary for this problem. Lots of stuff there. Number four. I'm just going to, why don't you try this one, pause this, try it, and then I'll post the solution. We'll talk about it for a moment. At 1, f prime changes from, oh, it doesn't change. I actually made a mistake there, but it goes from positive to positive. And it flattens out for a moment right there, but we do not label that as significant. So when we talk about increasing, this, cre this function is increasing for all real numbers. So from negative infinity to infinity, and then it's decreasing, it's not, it's, not in, it's never decreasing, okay? And then there is no relative extrema. So that one's a little bit of a quirky one, but that's just one of those classic cubics that looks like that, flattens off for a moment. Now, if you notice this, this is always increasing. Even though this says it flattens off, there's a point to the left that's below this point, and there's a point to the right that's above that point, so it means that it still is increasing for all of the values for x. So there's a nice little summary down here for this one. The function in example 4 is a strictly monotonic function. Monotonic means that it's strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. And then example four illustrates two important points. Not every critical number produces a relative max or min. And then even though the slope at x equal to 1 is 0, the function is always increasing, as I had just stated. All right, so this gives you an idea of a major function of what we do in this class, which is the first derivative test. The first derivative test finds relative extrema. And then you also do have to justify them f prime changes from positive to negative or whatever it might be, negative to positive for relative mins. You do have to justify them. All right, I hope that this helps you. Have a great day.